Blender 5.0 betas drop with MoGraph style presets, a free compositing tool set brings Photoshop power to your Blender renders, and After Effects gets Cinema 4D style cloning along splines and objects. It's Motion Mondays, and it was National Pug Day last week, so enjoy this video of a pug making some pizza. Pug, 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 only doo -doo -doo -doo. Atlix 2 just dropped for Unreal Engine, and if you're familiar with Grayscale Gorilla Studio, this is kind of that, but for Unreal Engine. It's a complete virtual photo studio setup with backdrop environments, light presets, soft boxes, and cyclorama backdrops. There's also a light painting system with intuitive highlight placement and procedural gobos that you can load up. It also has one-click LUTs that you can preview right inside Unreal, and a collection of procedural post-process materials with sketch styles, painting styles, and even Lego mosaic looks. So if you do any type of visualization work inside of Unreal, this looks like you should pick this up. Sticking with Unreal Engine, William Foucher just released Easy Toolbag, a nice quality of life plugin that makes working in Unreal much easier. So for example, when you are setting up a post-process volume, you typically have to dial in a bunch of settings manually just to make things look decent. Now this plugin does all of that manual work for you. So you can also easily add a level sequencer with a camera, set up a sky system, add lighting reference spheres, all with single clicks. There are also viewport helpers that let you adjust things like frame rate capping, screen percentage, and exposure compensation without digging through menus. So this plugin also integrates seamlessly with all of William's other tools like Easy Fog, Easy Rain, and Easy Atmosphere. It's also easy to go grab it over at Fab. Now it's time for some School of Motion news. Our very own Aaron Wilbinowitz created a really cool new tutorial, or should I say Trontorial, showing you how to use Unreal Engine's powerful chaos fracture and motion design tools to create Tron style resing and de-resing effects. It's a really cool breakdown of using those MoGraph and fracture tools. You can check it over at our YouTube page. And on the community side, our next portfolio review is on October 23rd, exclusive to our All Access members. Now I've witnessed so many of our students get killer feedback from people actively working in the industry, and it's just super valuable and definitely an added perk of being a part of our All Access community. Also launching in one week, After Effects Insider, our new course taught by Aran Stern. There's over 12 hours of intermediate and advanced training that teaches you how to work as efficiently as humanly possible inside of After Effects with all these super nerdy, deep cut settings you wish you knew when you're just starting out. You can check out more about all the things coming soon on our aptly named Coming Soon page. After Effect plugin X-Cloner just got a beefy update with two powerful new modes, path cloning and object cloning. So if you're familiar with Cinema 4D's MoGraph tools, this brings that functionality into After Effects. So the plugin lets you quickly clone any layer type using linear, radial, grid, path, and object cloning modes. And with path cloning, you can clone along drawn or pasted masks using options for count, distance, and vertex distribution. On the other hand, object cloning lets you clone based on a source's layer alpha or luma channel. So you can do things like clone onto an alpha channel, like a person's silhouette, which looks pretty slick. Now the plugin is built for performance with an intuitive interface and can handle thousands of clones. And it's compatible with After Effects CS6, if you go back that far. It's been 84 years. And it works on both Mac and Windows and supports multi-frame rendering. So if you ever wanted that C4D MoGraph cloner functionality directly inside of After Effects, seems like a pretty, pretty good tool for you to add to your kit. Storm VFX just dropped Hydro VFX, a new GPU accelerated flip solver for water simulations that is available for free right now because it's an open beta. Now this is a standalone application built on the foundation of Storm's main simulation tool and it's designed for Windows and NVIDIA GPUs. So one of the coolest features is that it is totally interactive in real time so you can interact with it while it's running similar to how you can interact with Sims in Cinema 4D. So while it's in beta, it's completely free with zero limitations. So you can do things like import geometry in formats like Alembic or OBJ and use them as emitters, colliders, or forces, and then export your results as play blast previews or cache files in formats like Alembic, VDB, or newly supported USD for particles. And since it's free during beta, it seems like a great time to splash around and see what you can create. All right, it's that time again to highlight some cool work from around the interwebs. And first up is the 
the new Beats Pill speaker campaign from Beats by Dre, a collab with Japanese graphic artist Verdi, who created this character called Ver, that's bear with a V instead of a B. And the piece was done by Bowl Production House and Buddha TV out of Buenos Aires, who I'm a huge fan of. They even shared some behind the scenes stuff showing how they did their animatics. So super cool to see how the uh, proverbial sausage is made in these things. Next up is the title sequence for Playgrounds in Motion 2025 by Nexus Studios and Erwin van der Isel. So they've been killing these openings for years. They did the ones in 2020 and again in 2023 as well. So this one's got a really cool variety with different 2D effects, simulations, 8-bit styles turning into crossword puzzles. It's kind of hard to see the titles at times. They come on in a little bit of a blip, but it's super creative, super snappy throughout. And finally, if I ever have a chance to have you watch SpongeBob, I'm going to do it. The new short Go Fetch is noteworthy because it was made mostly in Blender and the artists that have worked on it have been posting fun behind the scenes stuff showing viewport renders, lighting, materials, and some compositing work. And ever since the movie Flow came out, it's been interesting to see how more production ready examples of using Blender have been just kind of populating the interwebs. And now you have an excuse to watch SpongeBob and call it uh, work research. So we've been talking about Blender 5.0 for a bit and the official beta finally dropped last week and people are downloading it and discovering all the goodies. And there are the expected updates that we've been hearing about like ACES 2.0 color management, cycles improvements with thin film iridescence, multi-bounce subsurface scattering, random walk and new compositor presets. But there's a lot more coming to version 5.0 as it seems. The geometry nodes UI got significant improvements that geometry node nerds will love. More importantly, there's a new array tool that replicates Cinema 4D MoGraph style cloner tools via a GeoNodes preset that allows allows you to clone things linearly, circularly, in spirals, plus scatter on surface and paint on surface via an image map. There's pipe along curve, lattice deform selections, and this is the first time I've seen mention of a new storyboarding template with different markers, plus new pixel art brushes. So now that people have their hands on the official beta and it's no longer, you know, janky crashy alpha stage, it's been really cool seeing all these artists experiment with it and reveal all the little updates. And Blender looks to be out of beta and officially drop on November 11th. And sticking with Blender, there's a new free preset called Easy Photo Realism that's kind of like having a bit of Photoshop inside of Blender. And I downloaded it, tested it out on my little Shader Boy character from my upcoming Substance Painter course. And what it is is basically a compositing node preset with all these different handy settings. You got glare, vignetting, where you can darken or brighten the vignetting. You got lens distortion, chromatic aberration that's actually spelled wrong, which makes it that much better barrel distortion, noise for that digital film grain look, and everything has a hover over tooltip so you can learn what each setting does, which is super helpful. The developer mentioned plans to update it for Blender 5.02, so you can check it out on the Creator's Gumroad page, and it's completely free, so go on get it. Now, our student of the week is Alexander Hampunyenka, who just completed Animation Bootcamp with their Be the Ice Sculptor final project. They're a motion designer and freelancer based in Batumi, Georgia, and Alexander joined School Motion six months ago and says it's been a fantastic experience. They've taken a few courses, but Rive Academy and Animation Bootcamp really stood out for him. What Alexander really highlighted was the support from the teaching assistants. He said that the TAs don't just check your work, they dig in, find all those little not so obvious details that you can improve on, and that their advice have been priceless for making animations better. And that's the power of school motion right there. You're not just learning alone, watching videos passively, you're learning alongside fellow students and teaching assistants giving you feedback and pushing you to get better. So congrats to Alexander for really taking advantage of what school motion's all about, getting feedback back, applying it, and leveling up their skills and work. Nice job. Octane 2026.1 Alpha just came out, and one of the big features that Silverwing VFX is talking about is Gaussian splats that can now be directly imported into Octane. So Gaussian splats are essentially the enhanced point clouds that form 3D objects and simulate lifelike reflections. And you can see how detailed and high quality these representations are. It's really crazy impressive stuff. Now Silverwing's video breaks down first what Gaussian splats are, where to find splats, 
splats, and how to use Octane to adjust lighting and shadows. So you can actually have Gaussian splats cast shadows in Octane, including self-shadowing, which is pretty wild. So this is pretty cool because it's one of the first ways you can truly work with Gaussian splats inside of Cinema 4D, super easy using Octane and in pure octane fashion, it's super powerful and super fast. So I highly suggest checking out this video and definitely give a follow to Silverwing VFX2. He's got tons of awesome Cinema 4D and Octane related tutorials. Runway just announced Apps, a collection of five new AI powered tools designed to simplify creative workflows for video and image editing. They have Remove from Video that lets you easily remove elements from videos, Reshoot Product transforms single product shots into multiple asset variations, and Add Dialogues adds spoken dialogue to images based on your instructions. Then there's Upscale Video, which upgrades videos to 4K resolution with a single click, and Change Image Style reimagines images in various styles through simple prompts. So what Runway is doing now feels similar to what Autodesk did with Flow Studio, aka Wonder Dynamics, making individual AI tools that are good at specific things with actual potentially good real world production pipeline use cases, especially for anyone doing VFX work, product shoots, anything like that. And that is it for Motion Mondays. Be sure to stay tuned next week when we launch our next course, After Effects Insider, and we have our October portfolio review. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. And now I'm gonna go find me a pug that can make me a pizza because I am super hungry right now.